Today, we are back at John Kufleitner's to take a look at this 1976 Mercedes-Benz 450 SL. This is a car that I just don't get. But before getting into all of that, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss a video. If you'd like to get in touch with me for any reason whatsoever, leave a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. The second way is we made a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. No obligation to join, but if you're interested, link is in the description. A bit of background on the SL Mercedes series. It was introduced in 1954 and it remained in production until 1998. SL stood for Sport Light. It was considered a grand touring sports car that offered a high degree of luxury and performance. Right. We're going to get back to all of that. Let's talk 450 SL. Also goes by the name of R107. The 450 SL was produced from 1973 to 1980 with little to no changes except the price. So it's worth mentioning that in 1973 when this car debuted, it was $12,775, which is equivalent to 75, no, $85,000. 000. $246.08 in the year 2022. By 1980, the cost was $30,730, which is equivalent to $126,000. That is a huge price gap over the course of its seven-year life. Let's go ahead and talk specs. 172.8 inches long, 70.5 inches wide, 51.2 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 96.7 inches. I hope you're sitting down for this one. The weight, 3,955 pounds. I have never heard anybody say that their almost 4,000 pound car, that's two tons, is a lightweight vehicle except Mercedes-Benz. Just think about this for a second. This car weighs more than just about any American muscle car produced in the 60s. 62 Bel Air weighs 3,478 pounds. This car weighs more than that. 65 Corvette Stingray, 3,570 pounds. Figures vary over that figure. I've seen different numbers for the Stingray, but that's what the source says, that it's 3,570 pounds. Mercedes-Benz weighs more than that. 67 Mustangs, 2,577 pounds. 70 Charger is 3,005 pounds. My POS Honda van sit seating for seven people weighs 400 pounds more than this Mercedes-Benz. This car does not make sense. And we're going to get to the price and break all that down too. I'm very subjective in all of these reviews, but I don't get this car. It doesn't make any sense to me. Price. $18,000, which is equivalent to you spending $93,725.27 in the year 2022. For what? I'm going to break this down for you. This car went up against the Lincoln Mark IV. The Lincoln Mark IV cost $9,140 in 1976, which was equivalent to you spending half as much as the Mercedes-Benz at $47,591.00. 61 cents. 1976 Cadillac Eldorado was the most expensive convertible that Cadillac ever made up to that point, $11,000, which you would still have a large amount. You'd have seven grand left over. You could buy a Datsun 240Z with the money that you had left over. Doesn't make any sense. Total Mercedes production in 1976 was 370,348 units, of which 66,298 people got deceived with this car. Moving on to engines, 275.8 cubic inch displacement, overhead cam V8, 4.5 liters. This makes 180 brake horsepower at 4,750 RPM, 220 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM, bore of 3.6 inches, stroke of 3.4 inches, compression 8 to 1, has five main bearings, features aluminum heads as well as Bosch, electric port fuel injection. Does 0 to 60 in 10.4 seconds. It does the quarter mile in 17.6 seconds. It's slow. It's heavy. It gets terrible gas mileage. I have no idea what am I missing about this car? Did it come with a trunk full of gold? 
It either came with a trunk full of gold or drugs must have been really good in the late 70s because those are the only two options that make sense. All right, let's talk about this door panel. So just check out the materials used and the materials used inside the interior here. So I just want to show you, look at this material, look at this material, it is the same material that they use in those steering wheel wraps. The whole interior is like that. Equivalent to $93,000 nowadays for an interior made out of steering wheel wrap. Armrest, door handle to pull the door shut, as well as pocket. This unlocks and locks the door. This is the door handle to get out. This is to control the mirror. It does have electric windows, which are right inside here. $93,000 equivalent, and it does not, the mirrors are manually adjustable. But it looks like these might be tinted if you have high beams on so the beamer person behind you doesn't blind you, which is a nice feature for all of that money. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, this is the emergency brake and or parking brake. Brake pedal, gas pedal, light to see down here. Over here is the hood release. On to the button switches and knobs, starting all the way to the left. Brake release, just to the right of that is for the headlights. Just above that, there's a slider with an arrow. That is for air control to flow through the vent. Two stocks come off of the steering wheel column on the left hand side. The bottom one controls the turn signals as well as the wipers. The other one is for cruise control. Three gauge pods sit in front of the driver. The first pod has three gauges in it. Fuel at the top. Oil pressure is to the right. Moving back to the left is the water temperature. In the center gauge, that is the speedometer. Notice 160 mile per hour. I'm not sure it could go that fast, but that's as fast as the speedometer will track its speed to odometer in the center tripometer at the bottom of the speedometer gauge the final pod contains the tachometer as well as clock side the 1976 mercedes-benz 450 sl and it's actually pretty it's relatively straightforward the door opens up wide enough and just step on in When you get inside here, this is what the over the hood view looks like. I kind of like the over the hood view. Here's what the sun visors look like. This is what quality looks like after being, there's extra sun visors in the back. My truck sun visors didn't, don't look this bad and my truck's older than this car. Well, and there's no cur there is a mirror there, but no lights for the mirrors and visors are a little bit puffy. This currently has the convertible top on it. Um, it has a hard top as well. We just took the hard top off. This is what first person looks like with the steering wheel and the gauges and stuff. If I put my legs down normal, there's lots of room underneath the steering wheel. This is what I look like. There is a little bit of headroom, but I feel like if I hit a bump hard enough, my head is gonna hit this bar and that's gonna hurt. So it looks like this is for the temperature for the left hand side, this is temperature for the right hand side, AC, fan, this is where the radio would be but I don't see that there's a radio there. This is for the antenna. This looks like a vent of some sort. Gear selector, park, reverse neutral drive second low maybe that means sport low also when you put this car in drive it hunkers down in the rear it's really weird it's very unsettling if you're not used to it this is for the win window on the driver's side window on the passenger side and these are your four-way hazards start her up real quick I'm gonna put the car in gear and I'm gonna show you what I look like when I put it in gear because it's gonna 
hunker down in the back. Did you see that? I didn't move. I didn't move me, but here. That's weird. This is weird. So let's talk about this interior real quick. So the gauges are nice. The steering wheel is huge. To me, the seats are not comfortable. This interior space, it feels claustrophobic. It's it's not that great to drive, to be honest. I've, I've driven it. I'd rather have the Lincoln or the Cadillac or I have never driven the Chrysler, but I'd probably rather have it. And I just don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me why you would buy this car over those cars. You could buy one of those cars and have money left over. It, it doesn't make sense. These seats aren't comfortable at all. And from research, from what I've found on the internet, it's literally straw wrapped in this steering wheel wrap. It's so weird. It doesn't make any sense. And yet people bought it. Here's what the rear looks like. There's not enough. I guess you could have a seat back there if you really wanted to, but there's no seat back in this one. In the comment section, did they ever put a seat back here for insurance purposes? To the under the hood section. So we pop the hood and then it won't, it doesn't totally release. It has a secondary catch like most cars do. But the secondary catch is in a really weird spot. So it's through the, through the Mercedes-Benz emblem and it's off to the side here. See it moving? I love the fact that they still used hinges and springs all right so this is generally the part of the episode where we talk about pros and cons but before we get to the pros and cons i want to give you my final thoughts this was an expensive luxury car in the mid 70s but to me it does not reflect the price tag that Mercedes-Benz charged. It does not ride like a $93,000 car should ride. It's a very eh kind of car to me. Please, I welcome any comment in the comment section below because maybe I'm just missing the whole entire point of this car. Generally, expensive cars do at least one thing right. Nowadays, if you're paying $100,000 for a car, you expect it to do most everything right because that's the price of a house. This was the price of a house back then too. I mean, like this car cost a fortune. In 1980, you could almost buy all three American equivalents and still have money left over. That's how much money this car was. It just doesn't make sense to me. But on to the pros and cons. I'm getting all of the pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip, Auto Investments, 70 Years, 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, solid, highly refined touring machines, good performance with larger engines, Mercedes cachet, convertible allure, not long gone, so parts and service backup still ample. Against it, not sports car, agile, mileage, disappointing to drunkardly, rather too common, Mercedes North America won't help with gray market Euro spec cars. All right, on to name that tune. First person to give me the correct name of artist and or band as well as song title correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. That guitar solo does not equal the energy of this car, but the song title of the song describes exactly how I feel about this car. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. Um, please shoot me a comment in the comment section below if I got this car wrong or what I'm missing because I, I like all cars and I give them all a fair and equal opportunity and chance. But this car, for whatever reason, the car community puts it up on such a high pedestal, but nobody can explain why. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't live up to that for me. It kind of sucks, in my opinion. Anyway, have fun. Until next time, toodaloo!